Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen and here is an example of pyelometricoma of the skin. Actually, you may have noticed that the skin is really here at the bottom. So this is uh, upside down. Here is the tumour which appears quite well circumscribed, ovoid, and has this kind of pale yellowish or whitish appearance. So let's have a quick look at the labels. This is a dermal nodule. We have the epidermis here and this is the region of the dermis and we are going down towards the subcutis. Here is the cut surface of the nodule and this nodule has a kind of a pale yellowish almost chalky appearance. Let me just rotate it and we do not see the nodule on this opposite surface. Here again we can see the overlying skin. Let's learn a bit more about pyelometric coma. The pyelometric soma, which is also known as the pyelometric coma, both these terms are interchangeable, is a benign skin adnexal tumour and it arises from the hair follicle. Specifically, it arises from the matrix, which is the proliferating part near the base of the follicle and the cortex. This is also known by the older name as the calcifying epithelioma of Melherb, and this name is currently discouraged in favour of pyelometric soma or pyelometric coma. This tends to occur in the younger age group in children and young adults, but of course it can occur in any age group as well. And there is a slight female predominance compared to males. Clinically, this is usually a solitary tumour and Uncommonly, it can be multiple. It tends to favour the head and neck region, and for this reason, this may sometimes be mistaken for a lymph node, and the biopsy may actually show some alarming features that are mistaken for metastatic carcinoma. It can also occur in the extremities as well as the trunk, and it usually will present as a slow-growing, painless nodule that feels quite hard. Occasionally, there may be pain, itch or ulceration and this of course is a benign tumour so it is treated with surgery and the recurrence rate is rare and there have been documented cases very rarely of malignant transformation. So we can see that this is the epidermis and the dermis and this lesion arises in the dermis and sometimes pushes into the subcutis as well and it is relatively well circumscribed and almost has this chalky appearance. This virtual pathology specimen is found in our free online pathology resource path web. You can scan here to have a look and the registration link for free registration is in the video description. So grossly, there is a well circumscribed firm to hard dermal nodule there may be some yellowish, cheesy appearing material grossly, or it may actually feel gritty due to calcification. Sometimes there is even ossification, so cutting through with a knife may actually be met with some resistance. Here is another example, and this is quite a large lesion. You can see it is about 4 plus centimeters in maximal dimension. And here is the epidermis. This is the dermis and in fact this lesion is really sitting quite deep because it is surrounded by subcutaneous fat which is yellowish as you can see here. So we have a lobulated well circumscribed nodule with a whitish yellow chalky appearance and some areas of hemorrhage. Sometimes these nodules tend to fracture when they are cut or when they are sectioned for microscopy because of the calcification or even ossification. Here is another example of a much smaller lesion and you can see the overlying epidermis, the whitish dermis, and here we have this lesion that sits in the deep dermis and extending downwards into the subcutis, again with a very similar appearance of this pale yellow chalky cut surface. Microscopically, and there will be a separate talking slide microscopic video, so this is a dermal lesion. So you can see here, this actually is the epidermis around it. It's a little bit kind of sheared off here. And here is the base of the lesion, which is inked blue. This is a lobulated lesion sitting in the dermis. And it has got a combination of this very, very blue appearing basaloid cells and very pink appearing 
ghost cells, and there may also be secondary changes. The microscopy video will describe this in a much greater detail with a demonstration of a virtual slide. So we see these blue basaloid cells and these pink ghost cells with kind of empty spaces where the nuclei used to be. And sometimes there is this transition zone where you can see these pycnotic nuclei that are dying. Secondary changes would include foreign body giant cell reaction. We have a giant cell here. We have another foreign body giant cell that's actually trying to eat up some of the calcified material. And in fact, we have some ghost cells here that are transitioning to bony material or ossified material. This is why sometimes it fractures when we cut the lesion or when we bisect it. Hence, in summary, this is an example of a pylometricoma, which is a benign adnexal tumor that arises from the hair follicle. We have the skin, we have the cut surface of the tumor, which is very well circumscribed and has a pale yellowish chalky appearance. And this is because there is often a lot of degenerative calcification in this tumor. Thank you.